guys, today I'm going to be doing a review on the Pull Force November 1. And as always, before we get started here, please do not forget to like, comment, share, and if you're not already, subscribe. Because that means a lot to, and really helps grow this very unique YouTube channel. Remember, I'm the only one in Fairbanks doing this. So, if you guys want to see more very unique content coming from Alaska, please subscribe. So guys, this is going to be a little bit different part of the video, and uh, this is definitely back at the stump here, uh, not out on location like it was in the past, and that's because when I got home and I looked at the footage from the original part of this review, which I will circle back to in a little bit, another part of this review, I realized that all the test footage for this video was actually out of focus, and it was really painful to watch, so instead of just throwing that garbage footage in, I actually to switch it up and so if you guys are wondering why we're here at the stump as opposed to out in the field I apologize for that but uh, like I said that was all blurry and nasty out of focus stuff so anyways guys let's get to this test so the first part's gonna be batoning the next part's gonna be feather sticking and then we're gonna do some notch work so let's get started As you guys could see there, uh, the batoning went quite well with this knife, and that's because this knife has a point, uh, zero or 0 0.23 inch thick uh, stock on it, and so it actually is a pretty hefty knife. So baton work with this knife is really good and actually quite easy. that was feather sticking and it did very well with this knife always with feather sticking it does pretty well I found because of two primary reasons one because this is a full flat grind knife because it is very thick you wouldn't think it'd be as good but the, uh, Lion Steel has actually done a very good job at taking this huge slab of steel and really thinning it out it is very thin at the edge not to mention this knife is also pretty polished I mean it's not super polished like mirror polish it's near mirror polish polish like it's just barely mirror polish you guys can kind of see like how you can pick up a piece of wood there so it is just barely mirror polish uh, but for the most part it is pretty smooth and when you're carving on a piece of wood like this having a very smooth surface really helps it to glide so those are the two reasons why this knife feather sticks very easily now let's get into carving. So guys, I was playing around with this uh, willow a while back, so do keep in mind that these three notches are not a part of this test. Sorry, I have limited resources here, so I'm just going to be reusing this piece of willow to do the tests for this knife, but it should work out well.
guys. I apologize if this seemed a little rushed. Uh, there is a storm actually right now. I'm at the tip of it. It's just starting to rain. So I, I tried to do all this stuff pretty fast. Uh, still show you guys, you know, good enough of what I was doing was accomplishing. A brief synopsis Anyways. of how this thing carves. This is the other carving stuff. This is all with this knife here. And it does very well. In fact, like I was continuing to say, in several of the other uh, things like a feather sticking and such, uh, because pull force slash uh, lion steel does such a good job at grinding this knife down to such a sharp edge it actually crafts very well about the only problem you begin to run into is because this thing is, has so much width in doing smaller things like this round notch here the width begins to be a little bit of a problem but aside from that it actually does a very good job it is very capable anyways guys let's move over to the next part of this test which will be back in the field and not where it's raining <laughs> Okay guys, I'm out. So guys, hopefully you like that nice little use. Now let's get into the actual overall opinions on this knife. And I've been using this knife ever since January. So now it's getting close to five months with it. And overall, I have put a, quite a bit of use on it. And it is a very impressive knife, I have to say. Uh, of course, if you guys are unfamiliar with Pole Force's line, this uh, knife pretty much is the successor to things like the Pole Force November 1. And something, the first thing I really like about this knife and what really attracted me to it was its price point, of course. <laughs> That's pretty much what attracts us all. But this knife still comes in around $295, so it's still pretty pricey. But this knife, what I like about it, is the fact that unlike the Pole Force November 1, which is smaller in all ways, thickness, width, length, and everything, and that knife came in at $365. This knife, which is bigger in all ways, plus has a survival or a unit in here that you can carry survival goods in. Uh, it comes in at over, you know, around $60 cheaper, if not more. I think that might be $70 cheaper than the uh, Pull Force November 1. So we're talking a big dip in price. And something that I like is, though there's a $70 difference between these two, there's no difference in no quality. So, or this knife still uses nylock steel, which is a very good steel for those who don't know. Um, it's very good. Uh, this knife also uses still a Kydex sheath. It's still made in Italy by uh, Lion Steel, so it still has all the great quality that things like the Kilo 1 and the November 1 had, but it's so much cheaper. And so I really, really like that. So the next thing I really like is, also I have to say, and I'm really glad Pole Force listened to me on this one, and if you guys remember, I did kind of critique the original November 1 on the sheath, but the sheath on this knife is very well executed, and they've really taken to heart things that I said and just added their own personal flares that I really liked. And so, first of all, there's no obnoxious piece down here. Like, on, if you guys remember the November one, it kind of had this weird Kydex sheath. I, I liked the Kydex sheath, but it was not the best in the world. Uh, so they eliminated a lot of excess Kydex on this, and the next thing they did was they added a nice flare out on this side, for your thumb, if you're, of course, if you're a right-hander, it flares out and allows you to easily draw the knife. Another thing they've done to improve the knife uh, overall is that they've actually made this a, not necessarily super, super mirror polish, but they have made this a mirror polish finish. And that is really, you really notice that when you begin to feather stick. You'll notice just how well the knife glides across the wood as well as, you know, the edge is just picking up just a little bit of wood, but the rest of it's gliding across. And so it's really super smooth to do things like that. In addition to notch things, it's also very easy because, like I said, a lot of it has to do with just how polished it is. Once again, as well, because it's polished, two other benefits are the fact that it batons a lot better because, once again, the this contact area... Uh, is not grabbing and that's a really important thing because this is a full flat grind knife so it, there's a high chance if it's not properly you know like polished it'll really grip up and not want to baton as easily and I've had experience with that with other full flat grind knives the other thing that it does is rust protection. With the original uh, November 1, it was stone washed, and so if you guys know, I got quite a bit of rust on it, and it, rust, it rusts rather easily, 
because once again it's stone washed whereas this knife being so polished i've actually had no rust issues on this knife and i've treated it in a similar way that i treat the uh, november one so no rust issues on it and i've really loved that in addition, something else that really impresses me, like I was going to say, is the execution of the thickness of this knife. Once again, this knife is 0.22 in thickness, and that's of course in inches, and so it's getting really close to a quarter inch thick, which is pretty big. I mean, this knife is thicker than my Tahoma Field knife here, but you know, you generally think this is like a pretty big, beefy knife. This knife is actually thicker, and so make no mistake, this is a pretty hefty piece of steel, but the way that they've ground this thing has actually made it very, very thin, and they've really, a, really been able, able to grind this knife down to be very, very thin. And one of my initial, one of my largest concerns about this knife initially was how is it going to slice? How is it going to do fine and delicate tasks? Because once you start to get into the quarter inch thick realm, things start to get really, really bad as far as, you know, how, how good your knife will actually cut because there's just so much steel behind the edge that it becomes hard to pass it through another material. But like I said, because it's a full flat grind, they, uh, Lion Force was, or Lion Force, <laughs> Lion Steel was able to really slim it down and really make a very, very thin edge. And not so much of a thin edge that would be weak, but it is still strong, but not like super beefy like most. And so it's very well executed. Another thing that I like, and this is something that some people don't agree with me on pull force, but I've always thought that pull force knives, they are, and I'm not just trying to like rep it and you know, try and promote them, but they are super ergonomic. Every one of the pull force knives I've ever handled always has really good ergonomics to me. And this one is the same exact way. I really love the ergonomics on this knife. They feel great in the hand in multiple different holding positions. Of course, this isn't really a tactical knife as much as it is a out outdoors, you know, outdoorsman kind of hunter knife. So it's not going to be super tactical, but it is very, very comfortable. The palm swell is very well executed on this knife. Other than that, the jimping, once again, just like on the uh, November one, I find the jimping to be very use like I love where it's placed I guess that's the best way to put it because what another thing I found on a lot of pull force knives is the jimping if you want it if you need it you can easily get it but at the same time they put the jimping in a place where it's easy to get if you need it but it's also really easy to bypass so if you guys notice when I'm doing a lot of fine tasks I'm either holding it like this or like this and this is the natural resting point for my thumb on this knife it's not here of course I can lock into the jimping back here but up here I, I don't have any jimping whatsoever and that makes it super comfortable and I really like that so of course the last benefit and I like this benefit for two reasons is of course the survival uh, little area in here and of course if I were to take these handle scales off there's a little area in there and I've done a video on how to build a survival kit with this knife <clears throat> I really like that area one, because it's a multi-purpose area. You can put things like ferro rods, you know, survival kits, whatever you really need in here, you can pretty easily put in here. Grant, granted, do keep in mind, it's not gonna be gigantic, but you can put stuff in here and something is better than nothing. So that is really nice. Uh, the second reason I like that huge cutout is because it's abnormally large for a cutout. It also makes the knife a lot lighter weight than you might think because once again this is a pretty hefty slab of steel because that 0.22 does start to taper around here it does not taper throughout this entire handle this entire handle is 0.22 so it's pretty thick and so it's a pretty hefty slab of steel but because they take such a large cut out of there it really actually makes this knife quite light weight in hand now of course the weight may be determined on what you put in there obviously if say you put a fishing kit in here with a bunch of lead shot split shot sinkers obviously you're going to have a lot heavier knife but if you run it bare like most times i run it bare just for the lightweight approach to it but it's actually quite lightweight if you run that approach so now on to the negatives, and there are a couple negatives that I've noticed with this knife over the past time. And of course, the first one I noticed immediately, and it's something that I like slash don't like, and that is that this spine is rounded. And while it's really comfortable to have a rounded spine, you know, it feels great for your thumb, this spine can absolutely do nothing. If you guys noticed, I didn't do a fire starting test because I'll just show you guys here with my 
uh, bushcrafter bracelet with a ferro rod on it. And this is being struck. Oh, whoa, it actually threw, threw one spark. So it, it did throw a spark, but it's not going to reliably throw sparks for you. So don't count on it. Like I said, it did just throw like a baby spark right there, but it's not gonna throw big sparks. So don't count on it. Um, that's my first and probably largest has a of the sharpened knife, back or at least a semi sharpened back. One that I do like was Bark River Knife's execution of like a sharpened back where it wasn't super, super sharp, like cut yourself on it sharp, but at the same time, it was sharp enough to reliably throw sparks off of a ferro rod. Either way, I would like to see a, you know, at least not a rounded spine on the back of this knife because I think that's a major, major bummer. Uh, because like I said, I really, I use my knives a lot for striking ferro rods, like a lot, whenever I can. So that's a big thing for me. Another thing, and this is something that you can repair yourself, but what I noticed was, so the lanyard hole on this knife, it works a lot like a lion steel, and it, it's really cool looking because they've actually, what they've done is they drilled a hole in the slab of steel for a lanyard, but then what they did was they milled out two back holes here so that if you look at this knife from the side, you won't actually see a lanyard hole, and that's because they're on the back. But while I really like this setup, I found that all the edges on the steel and on the G10 were all very sharp. And actually what had happened and why I don't have my lanyard on here anymore is because through day-to-day -day wear, like I'd wear this knife and of course the lanyard would shake, it actually, the the my car or not my car but g10 and steel were so sharp that they actually ate through the uh, outer shell of the paracord and so i just decided to snip off the paracord and take it all off and i did come back through here with like a file and clean it all up but that is something that you will need to address and something that you should be aware of when um dealing with this knife as far as knowing that the lanyard will pretty much need to be rounded once again it's not a huge deal it took me about like five minutes to do it so it's not a gigantic deal but do keep in mind that that area is very sharp and personally i would kind of like to see that improved because in my mind this thing is you know nearly essentially 300 dollars. so that kind of thing should really be taken care of uh, not to sound too mean but I, in my opinion it should be kind of taken care of as far as other things go, overall, like I said, the fitment is top notch. This knife, in case you guys don't know, is sourced out um, to lion steel. It even has like lion steel made in Italy down here. So it is a top notch knife. If you guys don't know lion steel, they make really good knives. Like their knives are over the top. So the handle, it's very smooth, no sharp edges. Uh, it just feels really great. As far as the texturing goes, very, very good. It's not overly abrasive, but at the same time, even when wet, I don't feel like this handle is going to, you know, like slip out of my hand. And once again, heat treat, perfect. Everything is done very well on this knife. Um, it is definitely, I would say, probably worth the price. I might try and go a little bit lower, try and find it for like $250, but if you could get this knife for around $250, I would say definitely, maybe even up to $300. I do think it is really good. There's a lot of nice parts to it that make it very, very awesome to use. And once again, I think the big thing is, this is a really large step up from their prior offerings, such as the November one, because they've made this knife significantly less expensive, all the while keeping everything that we loved about that knife and or the November one Kilo one series and improving upon it further. So anyways, guys, this has been a little bit of a longer review, but I figure with a knife this expensive, I really have to go into depth because I need to make sure that you guys understand whether or not this knife will work for you before someone plops down, you know, $300 on a knife. You should really know if it works for you or not. So hopefully you guys have been able to see. Overall, once again, I really love the knife, but uh, if you guys didn't, hopefully this has helped. And if you did, hopefully this has helped. So anyways, guys, that's it for now, and as always, I'm out.